what can neuroscience teach us about learning? The next panel will give us some more insight into that. Uh, we'll hear Martin Ingvar, Professor of Integrative Medicine at Karolinska Institutet, and Bruce McCandless, Professor at Stanford University, talking to moderator Adam Smith. Martin Ingvar, Bruce McCandless, welcome. Bruce, let me start with you. What insights are we now getting from neuroscience that tell us how we should be teaching and learning? Well, at, at the large scale, I think that we're starting to appreciate how this period from early elementary school through adolescence is a period of profound changes in the human brain. We're just starting to uh, grapple with. Um, the brain is being shaped and rewired and uh, growing in strength and abilities in all sorts of novel ways. This is at the same time during this period of life, children's access to high quality educational um, opportunities is having a profound impact on overall human flourishing, quality of life, uh, even longevity. We're trying to understand how these two things are linked. And I think most of the action that I'm most excited about right now is by studying the week to week struggle that children go through in productive learning inside education. There are now numerous studies that are actually combining the dynamics of an effective educational intervention with brain plasticity studies to see how guiding a child through an educational experience like overcoming barriers in learning to read or overcoming barriers in learning mathematics can actually drive changes in very particular brain circuits. I think this provides a new form of collaboration between education and brain science which might help drive new innovations. We're starting to begin to understand new principles of how is it that learning to read, a cultural invention emerges in the human brain? What are the precursors? What are the processes of integration? Why do some children struggle so profoundly? If we address this question at multiple levels, educational level, at the same time systems neuroscience level, I think we're going to make, we're already starting to make great progress. Fascinating, thank you. Martin Ingvar, let me ask you the same question. Well, to me, one of the things that have emerged over the last decades or so is that how wrong we built our school. I mean, school is a very late artifact and, the, and the biology is very old. And we know very well that learning together and having a leader for the earlier, uh, earlier phases of learning are profoundly important with imitation and, and social guidance, etc. And uh, we, yet we have pushed these individual learning types of paradigms all the way down. And the only kids that thrive there are the ones that have a very strong home. So we've actually created on industrial scale, full social, uh, full width over society, a school that actually is a machine for inequity. And it's really upsetting when we when we look at it, and it's all written in in uh, in how, with big letters in uh, neuroscience that the social dimension of learning is so underestimated when it comes to the pedagogical leadership and the ability to uh, to guide people and bridge them in an area where they cognitively are very insecure. Do you think that the shift that we're all experiencing to online learning as a result of, well, natural progression anyway, and expansion of education to those who can't necessarily access it in other ways, but now accelerated in, enormously by the pandemic, do you think that's compatible with this sort of approach that you're talking about? Or is it, um, in fact, working against what you're trying to see as a change? Uh, it, uh tends to when the data data are clear it tends to make it even worse uh, worse for kids uh, with challenge uh, social uh, socioeconomic challenged kids uh, very very simple the closeness the 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 my eyes are on you it matters to me that you are doing well as a student happens to be the most central uh, central part of the early uh, early parts of learning learning how to become a student learning how to learn all about that uh, all of that is a social uh, it's a social drama that every kid has to go through bruce 
Yeah, I agree that uh, I think that this shift to perhaps lower quality educational access for many, many children and reduced access to that is having a profound uh, exacerbation of all of these inequities that we see. We think that the development of brain structures for the foundations of future learning, such as reading, critical thinking, and mathematics, are profoundly linked to powerful educational environments in which kids are motivated to engage in productive struggle, guided to the right material, and having helping somebody focus their mind on just the most important things. We know that this leads to a cascade of changes in their brain structures to help them wire their brains up for success. This shift to online learning is providing some opportunities for very robust, highly skilled learners to engage in more independent pathways for learning, but it's also having a dramatic impact on children who really need that social guidance and that kind of culture of engagement that schools produce. Hmm. And as many of our children kind of learn on smartphones these days and things, what does what does our knowledge of brain pro of of the processing in the brain tell us about how distracting it can be, or how how um how negative it could be to have the distractions of a smartphone when you're learning? Even uh, I mean. Just having a the, the smartphone in the room actually is the, disturbs you. I mean, creating a real thought, it's about a seven minute process when you look at it neurochemically. And it's about, uh, you know, like a one, two hour process when it comes to training and really settle that memory, which means that the, the, the time span of, of creating uh, a, a, the imprint necessary in order to create a basis for further thinking. Uh, it's disturbed and, and uh, it's like having an army where uh, hundred soldiers walk in random direction. They walk essentially in average nowhere. So the, the neurons don't settle that new learning when, when you're disturbed too often. Bruce, please. Um, I think that these new technologies, these pervasive multiple screen devices, offer tremendous new opportunities for kids to engage in technology in new ways that are going to prepare them for a, a new future that current schooling hasn't even imagined. But at the same time, I think there's huge pitfalls that need guide rails. We know that children that are prone to distraction tend to really uh, engage in these multiple devices in ways that are destructive to learning and actually impair their ability to learn um, compared to a, a more focused environment without so many possibilities for distraction. So I think that, you know, as we unleash this large uncontrolled experiment of pervasive access to screens for all day long in education, I think we need to figure out what are the, what are the guardrails that children need to engage this technology productively? And then what are the principles by which they could harness these new opportunities? And as a last thought, the, the, the environment you described, Bruce, where you have educationalists talking to neuroscientists and many different people involved in trying to come up with the right system, sounds complicated to produce. Very briefly, how do you make that coalition work? Well, we're, uh, myself and many others are starting to drive radical collaborations between neuroscience laboratories and actual living schools and classrooms and bringing the neuroscience to children and some research has suggested that when children are exposed to the very idea that their brain is plastic and it's changing with all of their learning experiences on a week to week basis, they tend to persist more in challenging learning environments. And so I think this is an incredible opportunity to do this at an even deeper level by having children have access to being able to see and experience and watch their brains change over time as they go through schooling. It's a lovely idea to have them to have the, the participants really involved in the experiment. Thank you. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.